Hi, you guys. Today we're going to do a Christmas painting, and originally called Winter Wonderland. We're going to do it in acrylics. It's going to be step by step. I'm going to show you some stuff you may not have thought to do before. We're going to learn new things this time, and let's get started in a few. And the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics. Hi, I think that what makes this acrylic painting stand out more as a Christmas painting is because of the background, which is going to be gold. And I'm going to suggest to you, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about gold paints. And this original artist was an American artist. Uh, his name was Jasper Francis Cropsey, C-R-O-P-S-E-Y. C -R -O -P -S -E -Y. And uh, he was from the Hudson School of Art there in the 1800s. Um, he was the oldest of eight kids, a really interesting story about him, but what we're going to be talking about is this was one of my favorite paintings of his, and it has, it's timeless, and I think it, I think you'll agree when we finish it, that has a real Christmas feel to it. I think you're going to find something a little bit, a different way to paint this, where, like I say, we're going to be using something called um, gold gesso. This is by Daniel Smith, and um, this was, I've got a background, John, if you'll be so kind as to put the camera back down. Uh, I've got a background here uh, just on a 9 by 12 canvas, just painted it brown. And I have never done this before. We're doing this together. We're just doing this cold. I've got cold turkey here. <laughs> but I'm looking at this thinking to get this feeling of this, of this gold color, that if I had a, br a brown background, then the Daniel Smith um, gesso ought to be pretty good. Here, I got it, John. There. And um, I'm not sure if one should stir this up or not. Probably. Yeah, you need to stir it a little bit. So let's see. What do I got? I can stir it with. Maybe I'm going to do no. something terrible with it. All right. Sorry. Oh. I'm stirring this, you guys. And then I'll just put this in the water. <laughs> John's going, what are you doing? But it doesn't hurt. I mean, you can see I'm stirring up the gold. The other alternative is, you know, Colbine makes something called uh, nickel azo yellow, which is over here on the palette. Now, isn't and, that more transparent, though? And this is, you know, I don't know. I've never used it. So oh, okay. if we have used it, I just, I guess we have it. I hadn't tried it. Um, I don't know. I think that might be a pretty color in this painting in any event. We've got a couple new colors that you're going to want, which is the, there's several companies that make a gold gesso. Daniel Smith and Holbein both make a beautiful gold gesso. They're my favorite. Um, if you want to look around. Um, Very well, someone's going to say this gold interference. You don't want that. You really want a pretty good gold just so if you didn't have it, you could just use yellow oxide too, right? I mean, it's okay not to have everything. And sometimes I like to just show you new stuff. So that's going to go here. Let me just put that down. Hope that doesn't, it doesn't really look stirred here. Yes, or that's what it's, 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 it's that, That's just kind yeah. of how it looks. Okay, yes. so I want to just put that in the water here and rinse that brush off. And then I'll wipe it off on a rag. So that John doesn't have to clean it. See, I did clean it. See, ha, 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 ha. Okay. So now, I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna go right into the jar, oh. and, and and just come across here like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna instead of going down across like this, which is so we're gonna start with that. I want to go down and across. I make this pattern. He had a very very uh, nice weave on the canvas. This is pretty. Uh, Pretty inexpensive canvas, doesn't have a great weave on it. Um, you could really see his weave on the, the fabric. You know, canvas is just uh, woven cotton or linen. And of course, it's thread count, isn't it, always? So, like I say, we're going to just come on down here and um, do that. I think that's, that's kind of a nice uh, layer on that, okay? So now, one of the things that I was thinking was that his, if you look at the painting, his has got a little bit more brown in it. So this is just my first coat. And I was hoping that maybe some of the brown would show through. This is, by the way, the brush I'm using is a, uh, you could use any large uh, acrylic brush. It's a Filbert brush. number 12. So it's, it's a Filbert number 12, right? Filbert number 12. But mm -hmm. I mean, this this is fine too, okay? Um, again, just coming down and across. And you see, it, I'm just dipping it in here and we have this artist. Her name is Leslie Humphrey. She's an English artist, but lives in Texas, and she's she's been hired many for, for many over the years to do the Kentucky Derby horses. She's a famous horse artist. You can look her up, and um, she says that she starts all her horse paintings 
with gold gesso. Everything she paints starts with gold gesso before she even sets uh, one other piece of paint on the canvas. And that's just what some artists do. And I like to share these little tidbits of gossip with you. That's what she does, all right? So then something like this is pretty wet. Um, it would be probably nicer to have done it um, uh, sooner and <laughs> had this dry. But, you know, I just decided today I was going to do this. Now, one thing I had, one thought I had was um, burnt sienna, all right, might have been an interesting color to have added to that. Let me just see what this, this Holbein stuff does. I just want to see this because it'll all dry. See, that isn't going to, that kind of tones it down. It doesn't really change it that much, right? That Holbein gold, it just makes it, really it makes sort it of bright. It really makes it look brighter. a lot yellower to us. It just, it makes, it looks really bright yellow. So I don't like that. So this, I feel a little bit like um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears here with the different colors. Let's see. Let's try. Let's just try a little bit of burnt sienna and see what that would do. I can wipe this off and redo it if we don't like it. Yeah. I just, I think, you know, how do you get that sort of old world back background look? Let's try this over here. That's not bad, but it's still. Um, that's actually probably the closest to what he had was this background with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with it. You know that? I think that's probably the closest. But you, you have to, it has to be very light here, so you wouldn't want much of this. So I'm just wondering if I shouldn't have added just a little bit of this in the, in the, cam, you know, in the picture. So, you know, I probably could have gone over it too, but I think I kind of like that in the sky here. I'm going to do a little bit over this, see if I can tone, tone that down a little bit. Um, so, you know, I just thought this would be sort of nice to have it toned down just a little bit, um, and, you know, mix this in while it was still wet, just very gently, I'm barely touching this, and, uh, it's, it's going to stay wet for a while till I dry it, and it just kind of come in here. I just want this canvas toned just a bit, it makes sense, right? Just come down here like this over the gold and just sort of mix this in. That might have been, you know, in hindsight, maybe we should, you should take a little of the gold gesso and a little bit of the burnt sienna and just mix it in before you do it. That'd probably be good too, huh? What do you think? I know the way you're applying it's giving a little bit more texture to it. Well, it kind of is. And I know that, for instance, like, and I can tell from the picture that the, I'm, want, I'm looking at the picture and see the brush strokes are going this way and kind of back and forth where the, where the um, snow is here. So I'm sort of, as long as I'm doing it, I'm sort of uh, imitating some of the brush strokes. Take a tad more of this. I always think of mimicking. Yeah, I, yeah, you do. I'm just trying to mimic the brush strokes a little as long as I'm doing it. This is kind of coming down like that and then maybe across. And this, I don't know. I think that's, I think that looks pretty antique gold. And why do I say this looks like a, what's the difference from saying this picture as a Christmas painting and say another one would be, I would think the fact that you've got the gold in there makes it seem very holiday, doesn't it? Um, and I'd say that would be the main, to me, one of the main things that it would be. And we've got so many nice winter paintings on um, uh, our uh, uh, a YouTube channel. My gosh, we've got a ton over the years. We've put up some beautiful, beautiful winter paintings. We have a actually winter painting kind of holiday playlist. I'll make sure that we add that to the, um, you know, as a referral there at the end under... Um, you know, what you might want to watch after you do this. But I think I'm pretty happy with this. It sort of gives the feeling of that sky. And um, so what I want to do now is just uh, put the lid back on this. Just put this all away. And I'm going to take a moment and dry this. And um, what I was thinking about, uh, this is going to take a second to dry, but John's got some, some uh, great information he wanted to share with you why I'm dot drying this and I can get a sense of how long this is going to take. I'm guessing as tacky as this is probably a minute or two, John. All right, very good. I mean, we'll be back after these words. Hi. When John Little and I Hi. first got together, um, he was in Michigan and I was in Houston. We started the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting about four and a half years ago. And our goal was to take people who had never painted before and really show them the basics that you needed, that foundation of acrylic painting, all the way up to the highest level of something you might find in a museum. And I've got to tell you that the artists that have 
uh, been with us for this, uh, even just a couple of years, are painting things you wouldn't believe. Started out painting party, very simple art. Maybe that's why they got interested. And now they've come over to the academy with through the aid of personal art coaching. I'm telling you what, you won't believe all the wonderful reasons why you want to become an Academy member. But most of all, most of all, it just takes the Groundhog Day out of painting. Because if you're making the same mistakes over and over again every time you paint, it's got to be a little frustrating. Let's get better every time we paint. Come join the Academy. And we're back. Well, that dried a lot faster than I thought. You know that? That, that dried very quickly. All right, so if you think about um, where the halfway point is on this painting right here, this one I've got here, which is, um, uh, this is my test sheet here. So let's just find the halfway point here. This is um, six, so I'm going to find three here, okay? This is three, and I'll just take my T-square, and just, I want to draw a line through it here like this. Let me just move this out of the way here for a second. I just, I want to, we want to just understand. I, sometimes I see, you know, after people have been following my video, my videos, that they, you know, we get to see them on Facebook and they write CC for s some uh, thoughts on, on, you know, how it could be better. And one thing is the placement. So to get in the habit of at least doing what we call a two line grid. <laughs> the old famous two line grid. I, I think that's really important. So that's half. And then let's find half of this, okay? So the minimum two-line grid, okay? I mean, this is not going to be hard. I just, just it'll help you with placement. This is 10, so half of this is going to be 5. And um, uh, if you do that, then you have a much likelier thing of, you know, getting it correctly on the, uh, on the uh, canvas. Let's see, let's move this up a bit because this is a long one. And uh, I want to make sure I have this. You've got to have this edge flat against something that's straight, like that, okay? There we go. So I'm going to just do this, okay? All right, so what do we know? We notice that the path is, you know, there's a path here, and it's very close to here. Do you see that, how close it is to the middle line, right? If you were to divide this up in half again, right here like this, this is probably where this this path is, and then this tree is not quite in the middle of, of this section here. And then we've got two trees there, if you divided this one in half, that the two other main trees are in this little quadrant right here. Do you see that? And then the horizon line that's back here um, doing this. It does something like this, all right, just so you just kind of see what we're talking about. And that's just slightly down from um, uh, half of this space, all right? It's just slightly, so it's not quite in the middle. Here's, here's half of this. The middle would be here. So it's just slightly down from the middle or maybe slightly up from that. That's where, your, um, where the horizon line is or where the sky, uh, you know, is meeting the land, all right? So when you go to lay this out, because this is a very simple painting, just take a moment and lay it out like that, all right? Now, I think that one of the reasons you see the brown coming through in the in the canvases was we painted over brown, and that's the kind of the effect I wanted. The, um, well, this isn't kind of, it's exactly the effect I wanted, right? So uh, I feel like that kind of aged this quite a bit. Now, another way we could age this is to, if we want it aged even a bit more, is that uh, raw umber is a very translucent color. And you could use a, uh, you could use a, a, a flow, or you can use a um, heavy body. I'm just going to put a little dab of raw umber. Where did I say it was? Right here. Uh, just put a little dab right there. And I want to see what that would do to our background. So I want to put this with, on with a very soft brush. This is a, um, wish I could tell you what else, a silver um, Bristol on brush. It's an, another filbert. And it's, and it's, it, even though it's stiff, it's still soft at the same time. Does that make sense? No. And I want to just not, I'm not going to wet it or anything. I want to just see what would happen if I put a little of this raw umber down here like this, how this would age it. All right, so that's too much. So I want to put a little water with that. 
and see if that would age. I want to age this canvas just a little bit. Now what happens is the water, do you see that, is beating up, so we don't like that. So in order to age this, what you're going to have to have is glazing medium, okay? Because that's a polymer, and that will help the paint stick. So that's, a, that's pure polymer, which is what acrylic paints are made out of, right? So the water had a tendency to want to bead, so we're going to do the satin glazing liquid from Golden. And let's try that again with that and see what happens. We're just going to, we want a really thin coat of that, all right? So let's just come down here. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. See how it's not beating up, you guys? And you see how I'm aging this picture? Just coming down here. You want to age something, but I still want the gold to show through. That is absolutely the perfect solution to this. Just uh, keep coming like that. If you get too much, add a little bit more uh, glazing medium like that. And bring it all the way down like this. I think, I'll, I think I even could have a bit more here like that. There we go. I'm going to just bring this down like that. And I'm going to just a little below halfway. All right, here we go. Here's our glazing medium and our little tiny bit of raw, translucent raw umber. Okay, and now I've aged this a little more. It says I really love the effect this paint this has on the picture. This sort of aged look to it. Okay. All right. So then what what we know is that this is halfway nine by uh, this is nine by twelve. So this should be what? Um, four and a half. Four and a half, right? So if I'm guessing, there's four and a half right here. Here's where it's four and a half. So just about... Probably five and a half. Five and a half is where we're going to say that this, this stops right here. I'll just put a little line across here like this, right? So I, I'm, I'm pretty good with that, right? I'm pretty happy with that. We're just going to say this is our... Um, this is how far down we're coming with this. Like that. Okay, so, I mean, it's an interesting, I and mean, I look at his painting of, um, you know, how he painted this. Um, boy, that satin, that satin really does grab it. I want to get a little bit of burnt sienna from about, this is halfway right here. So about three fingers from there, I want to come up here like this and add a little bit. Well, I've got the glazing medium and this still on it. I want a little bit of um, this color. And I want to suggest that it might be, you know, just the tops of trees. So while this is still wet, I'm just going to use the side of the brush and suggest that there's some this little bank of trees right here. And as, as long as I'm, you know, playing around with the glazing medium, I might as well do that because this is all very, very translucent in the background. Okay. Now, if you were using, uh, you weren't using the gold gesso, I think perhaps you could get by without um, uh, uh, having to, 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 you know, to use the glazing medium with that. I think you could probably do water. And there's a little bit of this color over here. Not so much. It's not so high. And it's just kind of coming over here like that. And it gets lighter back here. So the lightest part is back here. So here's that gold color again, and that's not going to work. The lightest part is back here, so I need another color. So probably the best thing is to do, um, uh, let's see, probably some yellow oxide and, and white. Let's try that. So here's where our yellow oxide goes. We're just going to put out the paint as we need it today yellow oxide and titanium white. Let's try that as long as we're playing. I think we can get this background pretty good, you guys. So the yellow, yellow white, yellow oxide. I want this just a bit brighter. See, a little more white. I want this just a bit brighter in here like this. And I want to tap on this, just tap it on here. Okay. I want this a little bit lighter right in here. Just that just you go back a little bit further. So, okay, so I feel like I've aged this pretty well. Um, there is a little bit of this burnt sienna in front of that, too. I guess we'll just tap that in there. I'm looking at his picture trying to figure out how he did it. 
and it's probably not that much. Let's go back to the yellow oxide and white. Now, once you introduce white paint, you're no longer glazing. Okay? You're just, once you put white paint into something, you're not glazing. So that's different. It's no, because titanium white is so uh, trans, is non transparent, it's, it's very opaque. In other words, uh, when you start adding that to a picture, you, you've lost its uh, transparency. But I feel like we've got this sort of darker color. Now let's take another moment and dry this. And uh, by the way, it takes a lot longer to, to dry a glazing medium. It takes a little bit. Give it a second to dry it. Maybe it goes quick for me, but I'm using hot heat. We'll be right back after me. Hi, my name's Ginger Cook, and if you've ever wanted to really master acrylic painting, the key to that is learning basic brush strokes and blending techniques. And John Little and I have put together a series of comprehensive, easy to understand, short videos on how to master these brush strokes so that you can later go on and tackle the larger paintings. In this, how about making things look three-dimensional and round and blending? That is a must skill to be able to come along later and do a painting like this. And because so many different backgrounds are a combination and, and art, art paintings, even this table is done in the same technique as the background. So I think you're going to enjoy this series. And, uh, and if you do, uh, feel free to check us out on gingercooklive.gallery on our website for additional videos. And we're back. Okay, I'm going to get out some zinc white today. I thought I would want antique white, but we're going to use zinc right now. And I can see from my... Uh, I can see from my looking at my reference photo that I'm not light enough back here. That is the lightest part in this whole painting is this area right there. And I don't have I have not achieved that. So what could we do? Let's take a this is a uh, five eighths inch, no, three quarters inch uh, angle brush. And I want to take some zinc white and yellow oxide and see if I can't get this lighter in here. Is that going to be light enough? No, let's try just some zinc white because that's transparent. And say I want this really light back in here like this. In other words, I want your eye to go back there. And that does seem to work. What would happen if we just got out cad yellow medium too? We, we know we're going to want that color. Let's see. I guess really got to be... This is where it gets really light. All right. This is our lightest area right up in here, and it's all glowy and light. Okay, so is that too light? Might be. All right, back to this. A little bit of yellow oxide here. Just barely touch it. There we go. Just say this. This is, but this is what we want you to be looking back there. Okay. Now, in his picture, he had a lot of skinny trees back in here that you barely saw. All right. So we're going to do another layer of um, the burnt sienna. That's our, we did our first layer. We're going to do another layer of that, just burnt sienna and water, I think. I think we can get away with that, burnt sienna and water. And I'm going to just, because burnt sienna is a very translucent color. I want to come up here like this, and it's just almost another layer of trees, but not up as high as the first one. So there's the burnt sienna. And I think I'm going to do a little bit over there like that, okay? And let's take a little bit of zinc white with this one. See what we got. These are a little bit lighter. Okay, all right, maybe a little bit of zinc white over here. It's a little bit lighter right here. Those are our darkest ones, right? It's a pretty simple painting, I'm feeling. It's very, very, very simple, and I think once we get it on here, it's gonna look pretty good. Okay, so now I need some tall, skinny trees. So I can use this brush right here like this, this big angle. You could use a um, dagger brush. But what I want to do is just very much in here, just using this. Uh, just the toe of the brush. Just the toe of the brush. We're just doing this. Do we know what paint you're using on that? What's that? What's the paint? Is that the Van Dyke? This is the uh, the Romber 
a raw umber. This is raw umber like this, and it's coming up, and it's just we're just suggesting the trees. We don't have to start them all. In other words, they don't all have to start down here. They can just some of them maybe just showing up in the background here. And let's take a little bit of zinc white with that, and let's make some a little lighter still, because we know we want some back here. Ooh, those are even more forward than, than the others. It's interesting. Well, okay. We want. I'm going to just rinse that off. I don't want that color. Okay, so I've got I've got those right. Now, just he's got a lot of them, so I'm not trying to be funny here. But he's got he's got a lot of these little trees back here. And they're just, you know, sticks and maybe some are crossing over. Uh, you may find it easier to go down, but I think it's, for me, it's easier to go up and lift, right? And um, I'm going to come up here like this. We're going to just do a few more. And I'll just put a few, just a few over here. Okay, all right. So now that's our kind of our background for this. And this is fun, you know, trying to figure out how someone else maybe have painted something and how we can make it work for us. Let's dry this real quick, okay? All right, one more break. Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I'd like to invite you to learn about personal art coaching. This is where members of our academy can send me their artwork and get, it's like having an artist in, you know, sitting in your studio right over your shoulder telling you how you can improve your painting. How cool is that? So if you want to know more about it, check out our website at gingercooklive.gallery. See where personal art coaching can be a benefit for you and help you improve yourself as an artist and really expand your painting skills in acrylic painting. Thanks. Okay. And we're back. That was quick. Now, I still am not getting the feel of this, this sort of brown that he had on the canvas. It's still pretty gold to me. And I'm not sure I'm totally happy with that, but what I do want to do is take some of this glazing medium again, which I'm out of, okay? Because I want to push these trees back. Glazing medium and a little burnt sienna. I want to come over this again and see if that just tones those back. Does it make it a little darker right here? I'm just going to make this a little darker right here. Okay, so just I didn't go all the way up. It's a, I still left this lighter layer. But I didn't go all the way up with that. But I did want to do that, okay? And now I'm going to just, um, I mean, you can kind of see this. This is a halfway point. I'm going to just rinse that off the brush. And while that's drying, okay, while this is drying, uh, let's pull some of this other stuff. So if this is halfway right here, this is my halfway point. My road starts here. So I'll just take a little bit of zinc white and... Um, uh, a wide brush like this, a little bit of a yellow oxide, and I'm going to go this way and say this is our kind of where all the paint goes sideways here like this, and it comes up here, a little bit of zinc and yellow oxide, and we're going to come up here like this, and we're going to go across this way in front of our trees here. Now, here's another thing. We need another lighter yellow. And where was that great yellow that I got from Cinnamon? We had a good yellow here. Uh, well, I'm going to try Azo Gold because that's a really good color. Let's try Azo Gold because that's very yellow. It looks like burnt sienna, but it's not. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of nice. That's a nice color. That would be pretty up here. Some of that color, but maybe not. I'm just let's mm, still it's too yellow. All right, let's try white and let's try white and yellow. All right, too yellow. Look, don't don't live with the color if you don't like it. Here's a little one of zinc white. I, I think I'm pretty much stuck with zinc white. Let's try titanium because that's too bright. Now, if you have a color you don't like, here's what I want you to do: just scrape it off. Just take a moment and scrape. another vacation photo again. This one looks like crap. I didn't I think I could ever learn to paint. Not every vacation photo makes a great piece of art. Send your photo in to Ginger with personal art coaching before you pick up your brush.
that we needed a little mm -hmm. titanium here. We've got this path doing this, so we're going to put it in. We'll just do the best we can. Obviously, we're not, be, we're not forging his stuff this week, but we can kind of be inspired by it and maybe take something from it we liked and see what we can do to make it, make it ours, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put that back this way, and as we come over here, there's a little bit more of the burnt sienna in the paint, and maybe I'll just come up like this, do that, okay? Yeah. How's that? We're just going to do that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I like that. All right. So now can you kind of see that we've got, we've sort of suggested a road back here and a path. And then what we want to do is um, make sure that we've got the path coming out this way. So it's going to, we're going to say that there's a path coming this way. We'll just do that for now. Okay. And I guess what, how he defined it is a little bit burnt sienna in raw umber. How he defined it by, um, is by adding um, banks of, of uh, he added banks of stuff. So here's a little burnt uh, uh, raw umber, okay? And um, we've got a little bank of um, uh, ground here that's um, a little bit of zinc white here. That's that's going to define where our road is simply because we changed brush direction. And the same thing here. We're saying that there's some sort of little cusp of trees back in here that's darker, that's doing this. A little bit of burnt sienna in here like that. Have not put out all our colors yet, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. And let's come down here and do this. Let's say that this is another one right here. Let's just say we've got going to just do three. I think he's got, well, he's got three and some pine boughs, right? So then the trick is, where do you put the snow? Now, that's an interesting thing. Where do you put the snow? And, um, you know, what can you do here to put the snow? Well, if we do a little bit of zinc white and a little bit of um, yellow oxide, that seems to be a good color. Let's, let's brush the brush strokes this way. Now, look, it's still a big brush. We're doing something this way. And we're going to do something kind of this way. And let's see, we need cad red medium. Where did that go? We had that somewhere. Yeah, I told you we'd put out paint as we needed it, yes? So I want something a little warmer than my burnt sienna. So I'll take some yellow and cad red medium, mix a little kind of brighter color, add some burnt sienna to that. Now, I want to say that I've got this kind of beautiful uh, rust color coming down this way in here like this, down like that. See how we did that with just, just mixing some colors? And if you're getting globs of paint on your picture, you're using too much paint. I really like this color, so I'm going to say here's my little island here. That's, um, remember I told you we've got like a little road here. I'll just um, push some of this back. I'm just kind of brushing over some of these trees and shoving them in the background. See what I'm doing? Okay. I always think these are going to be just super easy when I start this stuff. And then people are going, what did you just do? I don't get what she did. What did she just do? But I think, I think you'll get this. Now, we know we want it. Um, we had that color, so let's do. All right, so we got, we're saying this is our road here going this way, right? And then we've got a little island here. And then I think we've got a little bit of mixing white coming up this way into this. And we're not talking about how this ended. We just know it ended there, right? But really up in this area, we're just, we're saying it all went kind of up this way, like this. This is our snow kind of up this way. Maybe a little bit more yellow and white, yellow oxide and titanium white coming over here. All right, so that's kind of what's defining everything now. Pretty much was defining everything. So that's an interesting one. I mean, I haven't ever done a background like this. I think it's kind of fun. One of the things about exploring the old dead artists, don't you think, John, is that you get to, to look at things in a different way than you would have thought to paint them. Oh, absolutely. Right? They did things a lot different than we have in different materials as well. 
yeah, they had different materials. It was oil paint. Who knows what the colors he had. But I mean, I'm trying to figure out how do I get this old world feel to this, and I think that I'm sort of getting that. I think, you're, just, I think you're, you're, you definitely have the old feel to it. Do I have the old feel to it? And yeah. I, had, I had a thought, and I want to share it with you guys, see what you think. You know, when, uh, someone on The Voice sings a current song. They don't say they're copying somebody. They don't ask them to make up songs and sing, right? These are called cover songs, and I think we should call these cover paintings. Cover paintings. Covers. They're, but, you know, they call them cover songs. If you're going to sing a, a Barbara Streisand song that she sang, you're, it's called doing a cover. It's a cover song. Even though it was never on the cover? Yeah, even though it was never on a cover. Well, really? it probably was on a cover, but in that case, they're called cover songs. So but I we're going to do cover paintings. I think these are we're like cover... We're going to coin a new phrase. These are cover paintings, and I think you've got to feel good about that because, um, I mean, I had somebody today sit, sit there and say, well... I just don't want to paint stuff that everybody else has painted. You know, no two people have the same handwriting. No two people are going to paint this the same. What are you going to learn from this? You know, if you really want to expand your painting experience, try something different, right? That's all I can tell you. Try a little bit different. See now, what would happen. all the old masters copy and paint and duplicate oh, what their masters they, did? You bet. They all learned it. Everybody they learned those learned techniques. All the way. Yeah, they learned those techniques. You've got to learn. I mean, Ginger's now learning a new technique. She's never done this before. She looked at a painting and goes, how can I duplicate it? Yeah, he how did can it I back in 1895. And she goes, I want to duplicate that in exactly. today's materials. Exactly. I want to duplicate that. I want to have She's some of this. She's trying to expand her horizon. A little This orange paint back here just brings something into the background here. I, you know, you can layer. I think what you're going to learn is all about layering in this one, more so than maybe some of the others we've done, because I want it light back here, but I still want that sort of orange glow. And I think, ooh, we've got that. Don't you think we've got that, that orange glow? Now, the next step would be to, um, uh, we've got these kind of trees, and then he's got in here, he's got, um, uh, oh, I can show you on this one, he's got this little group of trees right right here um, with the snow. And it's interesting how he decided to paint snow, but he's got this little group of trees right there. So I'm going to just rinse this brush. And by the way, if you're not touching the bottom of your container, don't swish it. Really touch the bottom of your container. Wring it out. Come on, you guys. Don't get lazy on me. Some of you, I notice when I get it, we do personal art coaching if you haven't been watching our commercials on Art Academy. And what's great about that is that you can, you know, do something called a fast pack where you can just maybe sketch something out and say, what do you think? Or maybe you're thinking about painting a family photo, a fast pack, and I can say, good idea, bad idea. Or you've maybe gone all the way through a painting and just need some advice and, and some help on how you're, maybe you're stuck or maybe you're finished and say, what do you think? Um, these are things that we do. And what I've noticed from uh, our academy members um, is that uh, the newest students use too much paint. That's their biggest thing is the newest people use way too much paint. They kind of load their brush up and not understand. So I would say the one thing you want to have is um, is a, a very, very good uh, brush. You know, know how to load your brush because that will make a difference. Now he had, a, from this little area here, he had a little little tree going this way. And I, I, would, I, should, I would do it darker just so you could see it. I think I would even do it in a pen so you could see it. But I should do it in a Posca pen so you can see it. Well, I'm just going to paint it in. <laughs> okay? All right, so I've got my... So follow along. All right, I'm just going to paint it in. So I'm going to just kind of look at this real quick or look at what I'm looking at. So you've got one coming from this island. It's coming up here like this. And the heart. See, I'm just using the last little bristles, right? And But the harder you push, the fatter the thing. So... Probably the, and the rather thing than, in this case would be the trunk or the branch. Yeah, that's it. That, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's the so thing. So I think I'd rather have a dagger brush. For and the what's reason a dagger this, brush? This is a wonderful. Um, this is a silver, a uh, silk uh, dagger brush, one quarter inch, and for a paint for, for small trees like this, it's a little bit easier. Kind of a damp the brush there. Go now. Look here. Kind of like a hose in an ink well. Yeah, it it really is great, and I think I had it. I had it. I wet it, but I probably shouldn't have. All right, so I'm going to say that he's got these. These are coming here like this. Lighter those, um, and these are a bit taller. 
these go up a bit higher than those others over here. Okay, just notice that. And he's got kind of one coming kind of over this way. And remember, trees are fatter at the trunk than they are at the um, uh, anywhere else. You know, that as they go up, they get thinner and taper. Okay. So we're saying that this is, here's a trunk here like this. I'm going to say this one is fat. We're just going to start. You can always fatten them up, right? Start skinny and then decide to fatten. Yes? Here's, we'll just make this one too, like that. We're saying there's another one here. It's coming this way. All right. So I've got those trees, yeah? That's pretty good, yeah? And then I'm looking over here, and he's got one over here that's all by itself, and it's sort of wiggly. And it gets very thin up this way. And then a little tiny branch coming this way. Let's see, I'd still like to go up. If you feel comfortable going down, uh, I don't know. The harder you push, the fatter the, um, uh, the, fatter the branch. So you, you, it actually takes some fairly good muscles in your arm to keep something this um, uh, uh, thin, you know, and to really taper it. If you're having trouble, um, just take your time, maybe turn it painting upside down so that you're going, you're just going the other way, whatever. All right, so he's got some there, right? He's got that, that tree right there. And then um, he has another little one right here, just a little tiny one. It's doing this. It's kind of forking almost like that. And these are, uh, like I say, it's a little darker. Let me put a little bit more of this um, this paint out. This is just the raw umber in the fluids. You could also use a, uh, for this, you could probably use um, uh, Van Dyke Brown would have been a good color because it's a little darker. But we're just going to say this is our, this is the color here. Ooh, look at the big puddle that made. All right, so here we go. Barely touch it. Okay, so that's coming up here. And uh, that those are the big ones right there. And then he's got the two pine trees. But he also has, believe it or not, which is interesting, as long as you've got this little brush out. See, so right about here. I guess maybe this is where the, the, the road is crusting. That's what it is. He's got this. It starts starts right about here. And it does this. And they're saying that there's a road's crusting. And then you can see another bit. It's kind of going back here like this. And then there's some tracks that are kind of going this way. And you lift up. And we'll cover those up like that. So there's this kind of, we're suggesting a road without there being one. And, I'll sh and we'll cover some of this with snow so that it um, kind of disappears on us. But there's the, there's that. And then there's something, I don't know, some weird stuff over here. But we're not going to go into all the detail. We want the general feeling of this without, you know, killing ourselves with the detail. So that's drawing for a second. Let me just show you some stuff some of our holiday academy pictures that are either by the time this premiere airs they're going to either they're going to be hopefully you're going to see this fairly soon if it's not out already in the academy look for it this is uh, based off a uh, church that we took a picture of in canada this fall halifax and this is our uh, ho this is our holiday uh, snow uh, painting for the academy this is uh what's this about 11 by 4 14 or something yeah, 11 14. by 14 and I love this one and I think this I think if, if this if you don't join the Academy over this piece I would be very surprised and we also have um, our Academy uh, snow globe which is part of our snow globe collection and we've had some we have some snow globes on YouTube also and we've got a couple on YouTube under snow globes you might look for those maybe I'll show you those later Here's another Academy uh, snow globe that was for our Wave and Water Masterclass, just a picture of it, because I think the original was sold. So these are fun to collect and do, right? And this is, these are kind of, I really love the show and tell part of our show, all right? Now, if you think about this, if you like this type of style painting, this was a YouTube painting we did last uh, spring with an old barn. 
And uh, this would have been an easy enough one to transform into a holiday card, perhaps a wreath, maybe some, um, maybe I probably put the wreath right here on the on the fence post, and perhaps you know some decorations on the tree. I mean, you could you could really holiday this one up too if you wanted. This is a YouTube a video that we did. I love this one. I think you would too. You can make nice Christmas cards out of that uh, one. I think you could. I think, and then we've done several YouTube ones, and I think this is another one we did last year on YouTube, just this bridge with the layup and everything. So we, um, this is just a portion, just a fraction of the great stuff that we've done for YouTube, and we've got some great holiday ones for our Academy also. If you like the old-timey stuff, this is a great one from an artist named Frederick Frisk originally, a uh, Swedish artist, and see the the guy dragging the tree up. This is um, an Academy lesson, and again, this could be a very nice, subtle, kind of old-timey card if you like the style, okay? So those are things to think about, but if you just, my favorite this year that we've done so far in the Academy is this book with the cocoa and the hot cocoa and the pine cones and the little green ribbon. Love that. So if you're interested in, you know, just kind of getting into the feel of that, that's a great tutorial also, 9 by 12. So, and oh, here's the uh, snow globe that we put up last year on um, YouTube with the fun year little before, panda 2017. bear. In 2017 with the little panda bear. Isn't he cute? So these are things you could do if you're interested, right? Yes and yes. Get your house all decorated for the holidays. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's an artist you can keep changing. All right, I think that's dry enough. Let's take a small, um, let's take a small brush now, and um, I'll just get a little small one here. Uh, something. Right, here we go. Quarter, quarter inch. What is this? An eighth inch? Uh, quarter inch. All right. Now, what we want to do is before we get too far, is we want to add uh, some of the the um, uh, snow on this tree. Now, as you know, purple, gray, yellow. So rather than put black in this, which we could have done to that too, I could have added black to this and that would do it. And I'll show you what that, let's just show you what that would do, right? Because I think a lot of you have black paint and let me just show you uh, what that would do if we put a little black out and put a little, no pun intended, a little tiny black, little dot, like 1%, right? Put a little dot in there. That's sort of a gray yellow. See that? So if I were to tap on, he did these little puffs of stuff, like almost like little powder puff things on top of this tree. That works. Now, um, the other way would be to take some Dosnian purple, and again, you're using hardly any, or even raw umber, um, because you don't want pure white. That's the whole point. You want an off-white. Antique white would have been good. I don't think I have any, but... Antique white would have been done. So here's some white. Here's some yellow oxide. Here's a drop of purple. And there, there, there's this, um, and I need it lighter than that. So here, um, let's see, how did I do? I think that's pretty good too. Let's see, is that lighter? So probably a little more white in there than I just did. Okay, so we can do that. A little bit more light, here we go. That's probably a little better than the black. So I'm going to come across this tree like this and tap in uh, little bits of this white puffy stuff. I don't know. I don't, I've never seen trees quite like this, but it's not my card. So I'm going to say, okay, we can do that. So he said that right here on this tree back here with these little bit of whites, and he had some coming in here like that. And then back down here, just kind of in between, he had some of this little dots of snow back in here like this. Okay, now this is good because, you know, then you go back here and you see a little of this line right here. See a little, remember I told you there was like a trail that was going back. And then we're going to do a little bit of this up in the front, this color. Like that, we're going to say there's a, but we're not covering everything up. Does that make sense? We're doing a little bit of that and then come back to little more gold in it perhaps and um, just sort of break it up but there's a little bit of the snow coming this way and um, there we go so there was a little bit like that so there's his there's that now what happens next you have to do this in layers okay this is kind of keys you got to do it in layers so we're saying that um, for instance um, 
these these bushes here now this was interesting this was the way he did these branches um, he had them coming like this and almost at an angle um, he suggested that this was kind of landing on the top like this a very interesting way he did snow but I'm not going to argue with him about it just I'm curious to see why you would do it this way but you know what we're open for new experiences yes and yes and the same thing with this little one goat just we're saying that there's something happened right on this one nothing too drastic just a few up here like this we're just saying there's our little bits of snow on these okay I'm good with that so then the next trees are these pine trees and um, they're going to be a little bit uh, darker than that so we're going to take some of this um, uh, umber again I'm going to put one right here okay and I want to come up kind of flatten out the, the, the tree and then maybe move it a bit and then start to spinning the brush and coming up like that and then this one goes all the way off to the you got to bring this all the way off to the top of the canvas that's what gives you depth did you know that one's if some of the trees just kind of are leaving the canvas this one's down a little bit lower and the same thing here these two trees here were fatter and then they came all the way up here like this and then they leave yeah and the same thing here I, I would have he staggered them to me this isn't great design because he put two here and two here all the same I, I I'm not a big fan of that I guess he's got another one kind of doing this because I'm not a big fan of that let's just see that one kind of stops there okay so that kind of makes a little more sense okay and then we're going to put the next one I'm going to um, bring it up here and just say here's our next one in this space go it gets very thin goes all the way up to the top okay so that's interesting isn't it and then he's got another branch that's coming here like a dead dead wood that's coming here like this kind of and then it um, got these little tiny branches coming off of it like that that's what it that's what a brush like this does is you can do these great branches um, uh, to, do, to do a little bit of detail and I think there's another one coming this way okay so you've got those branches and then uh, this I mean to me this is fun I don't know if you guys think this is fun but to me this is kind of fun I, I think it's kind of fun we've got some bushes coming up here like this they're a little bit bigger again I don't want to make this too complicated I mean we spent hours on this but I think we get the general gist of how this might have been painted I think we're doing okay don't you yes yes and yes and I think he had a branch oh yeah look at him he had a branch this one he had someone one that fell I guess it it broke kind of and then it kind of came down like this and got all tiny on us you know there's this one that came down this way it did that yeah a little bit of side action here and then he had this 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 is a different way than I te teach people how to do pine trees but he had some branches coming off um, but there's so many different kinds of pine trees in the world that um, let's see let's bring this one up a little bit your paper's kind of blocking us there oh sorry let's bring this one up uh, here with some branches coming across um, that one's a little thick but we'll just ignore it put a leaf or something over it so there was a there was a lot of uh, just lots of little stuff going on up here here we go and uh, the same thing here let's just make sure we have a base on these trees like that all right so that's what that's what I have right now but it's getting some depth you see how we've sort of created some interesting depth on it and got this gold background which is I think very pretty 
and very different. I, I think, isn't it fun to try something different? So let's dry this and see what happens, okay? Be right back. Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I'd like to invite you to learn about personal art coaching. This is where members of our academy can send me their artwork and get, it's like having an artist in, you know, sitting in your studio right over your shoulder telling you how you can improve your painting. How cool is that? So if you want to know more about it, check out our website at gingercooklive.gallery. See where personal art coaching could be a benefit for you and help you improve yourself as an artist and really expand your painting skills in acrylic painting. Thanks. So far so good? Everybody's yeah, with me? Yeah, it's looking fine. All right, now he's got, we've got to have something really dark green. So we're going to start with, um, say, ultramarine blue. Well, all right, let's start with the, yeah, ultramarine blue. So we'll put right here. And, um, and yellow oxide. And a bit of cad red medium. And let's make a really, really dark green, okay? All right, mostly blue. All right, so we made a really, really dark green here. Yes, and mix that up really well, right? Okay, since I used the brush to mix it up, I'm going to wipe the brush off. Now, so I reshaped it. Someone asked how you keep the shape in your brushes. Now, this is sort of almost think of a bonsai tree. When I looked at how he painted these, I thought of a bonsai tree for this pine tree, all right? So you've got to imagine some branches coming out like this like that, right? And then come in like this. Almost a bonsai kind of situation like that. It is. It very, it's very oriental bonsai looking, okay? And then I want to come up here. Say there's this one. That's doing like this out of the top, right? And, um, and then it kind of goes in front of this tree. And we've got this coming up like this. Maybe something up here. The tree just keeps going on, right? We still see it, but it keeps going on. And then some of these are smaller. Okay. And then we've got something like this. Remember, like all pine trees, the trees, the limbs get wider as they go out. Sometimes they cross in front of, and sometimes they go behind. But basically, we're just saying this happens here like this. And... Um, most of this was up here at the top. Most of it was, most of his snowy tree was way up there. And then as you came down forward, you're assuming that there's a branch growing out of here. So that's why you have, say, say something like this, maybe some little bit sticking behind it, um, like that. So we'll do this one. And then the same thing with this one. Um, uh, this was really interesting to me. It just, again, it's a very bonsai looking, uh, kind of coming up this way, almost at an angle going up. And now uh, you're saying this happened here. So, uh, again, this is a very different kind of tree that I norm that we would normally paint. But, you know, again, because there's so many different kinds of pine trees in the world, I think it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Oh, Absolutely. And uh, there's a pine tree, John, in, in, um, it's, it, that grows in uh, Southern California near San Diego. It's called the Torrey Pines, and there's like three of them left in the world. And they call it Torrey Pines National State Park or something. It's a big famous golf course there. You probably remember, heard of Torrey Pines Golf Course. They paint Absolutely. a lot of... Um, Didn't we do a painting on that? No, not of Torrey Pines, hmm. but... Again, I want to bring this down a little bit lower. Here's our pine tree like that. And so I think if you keep it fairly simple, it, 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 it will read well. And then, bless his heart, he's got something growing over here that's coming out of the side here, some pine trees that are coming this way. We could put some branches in to go with them. But uh, this right in here is all pine tree. Like I said, there's this... This is maybe boughs that are on the ground. And then there were a lot of stuff growing here, just some sort of greenery that he had. This is all this dark color. It's coming along here like this, some sort of little greenery things. And uh, I've got 
that's sort of the tree here like that. It's coming this way out of this area. And I think back here, I think back in here there was some pine trees kind of back in here that we just, I don't know that we need to put them though. I think if we get these front ones, we're in good shape, okay? See that? Now, how, do you guys remember how I made that? So it was ultramarine blue, medium, a little tiny bit of yellow oxide, make this dark green uh, color, yes and yes. Mix that all around and wipe the brush off. Okay, so now let's come back over here. And again, we're going to start up here. I've got a big, big pine tree going. Okay, let's just roll that off the brush. There we go. I've got a big one coming here in front of this tree. Like that. Like this here. And then this is fairly thick here. It's just nice. You just sort of have a cheap sheet here. Okay. Uh, and... You know, one of the things that I think is kind of nice about this when we're doing this, it's exploring different ways to paint something. And I really, really like that. And we've done so many different of the... I don't think we've ever done this artist before, though he was famous for his landscape painting. And um, and rightly so. See, and this, even though this branch has fallen down, he's still got some branches that, that are sticking down on off the ground on and I'm not trying to do exactly what he did, but I think you get the gist of what it might be, all right? And the same thing in here in front of this tree, like this. We're just saying that out here on these branches that are all sort of connected. Remember, you want to put pine trees, these boughs go in front of the tree, too. We're saying coming down off the top. So we've got these, these, these pine trees. All right, now... Now what? Oh yeah, there were some just little tiny ones down in here. Then some sort of little tiny bush uh, growing here like this. We'll just tap that in. And I don't know if there was anything else. This one was definitely, there was this little tree here, but this was definitely, these ones were coming from somewhere else. From some other pine tree off camera. Right? Who are you looking? Like over here. Yeah. Like down in here, this were just yeah. Those look like just um, arms that are reaching in. Yeah, and I think there was a little bit of brown here. We did something here, some sort of little brown. Maybe it was, I don't know. It wasn't there, so I don't know what he was trying to paint. You know, just ooh, that red. That was fun. And um, oh gosh, look at that. That's a little zinc white and a little raw umber, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And I've got a little shadow under here. Look at that. I can add that shadow. And this is all kind of in shadow in here, too. A little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of yellow and cad red medium, I think, and burnt sienna. And we've got all this in shadow kind of going this way. Before the snow. Until we put the snow on top of it. Okay, and then we've got more shadow coming down here like this. More of the, bur the burnt sienna color. Just warm this up here like this, because we still have to put on the. Um, the we still have to add the. Um, uh, the snow part, you know, for the snowy stuff in here. So I'm thinking this is coming over here to this area like that. Kind of goes back this way. All right, so there we go. We've got that. Okay. Now, it's a wonderful depth in here so far, yes and yes. Now, here's where some of you are going to decide, I don't need to dry it. And this, yes, you do. You do need to dry it. <laughs> you are going to dry it. We're just going to insist that you dry it, right? And we have the dryer cops out looking. Yeah, the dryer cops are out looking. I think I want a few more branches this way to, for here. There's a few more in this area in here. I think I want this a little bit thicker than I had it and come down in here front of this tree. I think we can bring this down a little further. Maybe I don't know if you did or not, but now I'm looking at it. Now at this point, I'm kind of almost ignoring this. Now I'm just going to say, okay, from my standpoint, design-wise, what do I need to do to make this feel very holiday-like? And I think that, you know, how is this working for me? And I feel like so far so good. So I'm going to take a second and dry this. And then we'll put the snow on, all right? And we'll be right back. 
I try to get him in 30 second spots, which some of them are in three minutes. Three minutes. Well, okay, what can I tell you in 30 seconds about... <coughs> well, I coughed there. I lost three seconds there. I, and now you're blabbing. Now, I, now, I'm pa- now I'm panicked. But listen, don't you panic. Become a member of the Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook. Join a merry band of artists. It's free. It's fun. And you can place to show your acrylic paintings off and, and get tips and get all the gossip about John and I. And They were the first ones to know we got engaged. You could have been in on though if you were a member, too. So I'm saying maybe that real they, fast. Maybe they didn't know that. Oh. Well. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> You gotta watch more videos, then you'd find out. So be sure to share this in your playlist if you're enjoying the video you're watching. I hope you are, surely you are. And uh, thanks for subscribing to our channel. So let's just. Uh, and we're back after a great right, we're back. commercial interruption. I hope you guys like those. We've got a lot of trouble to make them. I think they're kind of fun rather than just having a blank spot where the hairdryer is. We just want to keep you all entertained. All right, so now I want to take some of this white color and a little yellow oxide. All right, and uh, that's going to be my lightest snow. It's going to be the brightest snow I've got. All right, and I think what I want to do is I'm just going to take it and using just the tip of this brush, dot it on the tops. Remember, snow falls down, right? Only hits on the tops, not on underneath. I guess I have to have a smaller brush for that. But I'm going to use this for something else. Bear with me. Here's a little tiny brush for this. We're dotting it on. He dotted them on in puffs. I don't know. Please give me a break. He did it in puffs. I'm just quite can't quite get he up to the puffs. He did it in what? Like little puffs, like like almost cotton balls, little drops of cotton balls. He'd skip a space and have a little pu- cotton ball things. Well, again, he was using oil paint, which is probably still wet, and he just had to dab it on there. That's true. And then also he had a different kind of tree. He had little branches going down. If you look at the details on it, he had little um, uh, little, um, little branches going to each one of the puffs. I mean, if you, I don't know how, you know, this was a fairly large painting. At the size we're doing it, I think we could be, we're safe to, to um, extrapolate how he did it. You like that word? That's a big word. It is a big word, but it's a great one for this, isn't it? I could so extrapolate that. We're going to just just interpret our interpret. This is my interpretation of how he might have done it, right? And but I've thought of a different way to paint something now that I ever would have thought of before I met this artist, um, and uh, through you know finding him on the internet, you know. Just I've never heard of the, Joseph, and you know, uh, I, I'm glad I did because as I come up here and. Uh, let's see, we're just all out of paint now, okay? So I come up here and do his, do the snow on here like that against this sort of, and I think that the gold in the, uh, in the it has an oriental feel to it now because of the bonsai look of the trees too. Remember that was a time when everything from the Orient was really in fashion. Van Gogh even later on did some oriental paintings, but people were starting to travel to the Far East and bring back beautiful pictures and paintings and stuff. And um, I think this was probably, um, I think akin, you know, this is probably that style, but it's interesting. This only, the only one of he ever did like this, everything else was pretty straightforward. Um, this was a really kind of a, a, a departure of his normal painting style. How's that? And well, he probably, again, he was probably branching out and wanting to try new things. Well, that's it. And there's nothing wrong with that, you guys, to, to learn to do that, to branch out and say, okay, here's Oh, this. I get to branch out with all the branches you're painting? I get it. Uh, <laughs> you're so clever. What a segue. I know. Isn't that good? So you'll notice I'm coming forward a little bit with the snow. And saying maybe this branch has um, more coming that way. Okay, so they're landing on top. Yes and yes, it's, it's all on top. It's, you want to, don't lose it on me now. Here, keep it simple. There, kind of neat, right? So I I feel like it's sort of um, coming together here. I think it's a cool painting. Well, it's different. You know what I mean? And it, it's really different. And I think that that's fun. And you know, uh, not everybody you know likes the same kind of pictures. And uh, some people just like abstracts. And, you know, this is not an abstract for sure. But it definitely is a different style of painting than we're normally doing, isn't it? When you think about that. 
definitely doing a different style of painting. And uh, uh, so, all right, so let me come back here and mix some more paint up because I'm out, out here a little bit. There we go. I want to make sure I get. Now what the, is that combination you're using? Just again? white and yellow, titanium white and yellow oxide. That's my brightest one. I feel we haven't toned it down at all. I think and white, antique white would have been good too. Um, well, it's kind of making an antique white, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. That's as close as I can come to that without. And I think I probably have some in the cupboard now. He did. We'll we'll do that post in a minute. But here we go. So, And remember, even though you didn't do the green, you can come out with a few puffs and it, the green will be assumed. Okay, so you can come out as long as you imply that it's on top. And you've got to, you've got to keep leaving enough of this dark green for this to show up. You can definitely think that it can be improved. Now, notice I'm leaving some spaces here where the dark green is. What all else fails, if you lose your dark green and your enthusiasm to make it snow, you can dry it and put some snow, put some dark green back. Yeah, so don't don't despair here. That's certainly something that's doable. Like I say, I want some little bits of um, paint coming here. Then I want some paint on top of this log skip a space and let some of the brown show through but a little bit on the log like that so that looks very um, painterly yeah and uh, put a little bit more yellow oxide in this I'm going to just no not that much I'm going to say that there's little bits of snow here they are coming this way over this and it's just sort of it's here on the ground it's really hard to say what his thoughts were about it I don't know. It's just I can't guess. So I'm going to say that's the edge of this road here, which is not solid. Now, this was what's interesting. It's not solid. If I have this big brush, it's it's kind of like there's this. There's there's some this doing like, like this, like this, and then it comes here, and then you skip, and there's some gold. So, again, it's it's not... It's not all, it's just not a solid road there, right? And then there's some snow here. Well, I guess we have to get rid of that um, drip we had going here like that. We had that drip, right? No, I kind of liked it. Did you like the drip? Okay. Here's some of my gold color back in here with some yellow. There we go, some white. And I want to say that there's... We want more snow back up in here. And he's got another bush. I don't know if we need another bush. Maybe we'll just do it on this one. He's got another bush here that's um, growing in front of this tree like that. Okay, that's some sort of happy little bush that's doing that. And... Um, uh, there's some, there's some pine, you know, here we go on this one. So, what do you, you know, it's fun when you think about that. When I was a kid, my people used to send out beautiful Christmas cards. Oh, that and was And my dad thing. was a judge, so we got, my favorite time of year was when the cards started coming in, my mother would let me open them. And then she'd always figure out who was on her card list if she'd sent them a card. Boy, they got one back, Right. And uh, you know, picking, you know, choosing the right card was really important, um, you know, for the year, and, and having something that. Uh, and then some of our friends, or my mother's friends, were very wealthy, and they could afford fancy gold envelopes. And um, oh my gosh, some of the cards, the artwork on the cards were so beautiful. Some of you have asked me to um, to do some of these old time Christmas cards on YouTube. I tell you what, the detail on them is such that it might be a little tough to. Um, even this one's taking quite a bit of time. How am I doing on time here, by the way? Uh, you're at about a buck fifteen. Yeah. See, this takes a little bit of time right now, right? And um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to, um, to do that because, uh, Simply for the very simple reason that, um, you know, it would just take a long time. Though I've got something. Last year we did something really nice with an old farmhouse that was sort of an oval painting that was really neat, too. All right, so I've got this um, this one, and I still feel like I don't have enough of these little guys out here somewhere. I'm looking at this picture feeling like I needed more in the front here. Maybe something coming down in in the front of his stuff. Are you going to clear up that little baby drip at the very bottom there? Oh, this baby drip? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's cover that baby drip up. Yeah, let's do that. Um, it looks kind of funny just sitting there. Yeah, it does. Let's just, let's just do, cover that up because, you know, these ha things happen, right? Oh, that's too, that's not going to cover. It's a translucent color, isn't it? There you go. Oh, I like that, though. Whatever this, this is the Azo Gold. That's burnt sienna. Where was the Asso Gold? Oh, what's this color? That was that uh, <laughs> yellow color. Oh, that's pretty. With that, that was that um, nickel gold by. Yeah. That that's a color a lot of companies make here, right? That was that nickel gold color. If I put some of this back here, just touch it up. Just that. Ooh, that you can really see the light back in there, can't you? When I do that, and a little bit of the. Burnt sienna down here toward the bottom, so you know where the horizon line is back there. But that yellow is pretty. It keeps going back, and this is nice. I want to make sure that we haven't lost this. So you've got the path going back there. You don't want to lose the path. So I suppose that what we ought to do is take a little bit of this burnt sienna. And um, I'm looking at this going, uh, let's just bring some of this down like this again like this and then take some of this white like that and just tap on here using this angle brush like this to suggest suggest snow just going to kind of do something like this just tap it in here over that and uh, And this was kind of dark right here. You see this in here like this, where this was, this was kind of dark. What color is that? Over, oh, boy, that raw umber really disappears because it's liquidy. Okay, I want to drop it that in burnt sienna. There's a shadow here on this tree. This is all kind of in shadow. Too much light on the brush. Don't you know that you can't do light and dark at the same time? All right, so we're saying that's the shadow on this tree. And we're just... You're know, doing something like that. So there you go. That that's kind of nice. And uh, maybe we want this tree to be a little thicker. All right, like this. This branch. Be a little bit thicker. So. Um, there we go. That's sort of. That's very different. I think that's a really a different kind of painting. Um, I'm going to dry this and then just do one more kind of last sweep of this. All right. And once again, we'll be right back. So you're on a roll now. Uh, I, I was, we got the outfit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, we got the outfit, boys. <laughs> We're looking primo. <laughs> Start again. Clap and go. Clap and go. Come back Why here, John. Hi. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is Ginger Cook. And if you're watching, as you're watching my YouTube videos, you're watching this, did you know that I have over 300 videos on YouTube? And one of the things I really would invite you to do is check out some of our playlists. All right. And if you're liking this one, we have one on flowers. We have one on oceans. We have all kinds of playlists. And I know that we can put that pop down screen up, but I just want to take a moment and say, if you're having fun with us, subscribe to the channel, share your videos, come check us out on our website, gingercooklive.gallery for more exciting videos too. So thanks for being a YouTube follower and for watching our video. And I hope you enjoy it. And we're back. Okay. So one thing that I think I could do, because I did this 
I did the dagger brush to do the um do them trees to do the trees and when I look at his trees um if I look at his tree trunks I'm going to get out the burnt umber which I said I was going to use anyway and we haven't put it out yet right I'm going to get out the burnt umber and ultramarine blue and I because I want these front trees to be in to stand out yes so what you can do for instance like I'm going to just take the side of my brush like this and going I want you to see the brush direction that I'm doing it uh, I'm just going to widen this trees these trees more at the bottom okay the same thing here I, I want them a little bit more bumpy than they are so if I if they look a little they're fine up top but I wasn't happy with how they were looking here then I want a little bit of burnt well let's see a little bit of yellow oxide in cad red medium right and I want to come along here like this and add a little bit of a little bit of lighter color to them here just so that they not that much just a little bit of uh, a little bit of this color. I want, want a little bit of this color on here, like that. Okay, and so where else could I put that color? A little bit of, I need to pop this painting up a bit. So I'm going to just tap a bit of this color over in here, like that. So this is an interesting sort of woodsy painting because it's, um, I always like to see where there's a dark, there's a light. I feel like we've got some pretty good depth. But down, like in this area here, um, oh, look at you, doggy. Now I'm looking and seeing kind of what he did. He put like some white right here on this tree. Aha, uh -huh, we're going to do that. You using straight titanium? Yeah, just titanium. Not not the whole tree, but yeah, we're going to just... Just where the wind and snow blew against the bark. Yeah, it blew against the bark. It's never a, a completely a straight line. It's not like doesn't go all the way up, but it's there, right? So we're going to say, like, in a couple places, the bark got, the, the snow got it, okay? The same thing here. Maybe we'll pull some of this over a little bit more now on that one, okay? That kind of thing. Ooh, that's sort of pretty, yeah? Yes and yes. And then I'm looking at, I'm still looking at the detail. He had this back here on these trees, too. He had some of this white back here so just barely saw it and I feel like uh, I didn't get as much I guess I did but I just feel like we could have done could we have done any more could, could we have done a little bit more here on this picture uh, well I don't know what else we could have done except um, we'll just do a little bit more of the white here now the white snow bit in on here like this I want some white snow going this way I think it's his woods where it's sort of it's going this way on his trail we're just gonna uh, going across here and he, he wanted you to understand that there was some light here it's going this way this is where zinc white can be very candy because it's which we don't have any more of, really. No, well, we we have some jars of it, right? But we haven't put any out. Let's just get a little more out because that's transparent. I'm almost done here, so now I'm just I just lost that brush on the floor. Um, John, remember to pick that up. I'll get another no, one for I'm now. No, I'm gonna get it now because last time it takes forever to recover those things if yeah. they're dry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John's gonna get it now. Good plan, right, John? <laughs> Good plan. All right. He's gonna get it now. All right, did you get grab it? Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, I don't think that was the one, but there's a different one. Oh, there's one. another one down there? There's another one. All right, this is the zinc white, because I want, I want some transparent white kind of over some of this. There's a new shelf under here. <coughs> yeah, we do. Let's All see right. another one. Okay, well, we'll find it when I get up. Um, I'm just going to put a little of this zinc white behind this tree, and... Uh, so there we go, something like that. Just make sure that we have this like that. Well, I I don't know. I think we we sort of captured a little bit of this. This is well. Remember, it's an older painting. It's darker, but <coughs> I think the gold 
definitely says um, uh, definitely says holiday, doesn't it? I think you so. Think that, do you think the gold says holiday? And do I have any gold I want to put in the front here? I really think the orange actually works better than, than any fancy gold color. A little bit of orange in the front of this warms it up more than um, much of anything else. If you do, it's just that's a little bit of cad red, medium, and yellow. And for me, uh, and that's the brightest you know side here, that's where the most color is. There's a little back there, but not much. But back in this area here, where the burnt sienna is and the darker colors, it's a little bit of um, dark brown here. It just pull this down like this and um, how, what a fun um, what a fun winter wonderland and, you know part of me wants to just take my toothbrush and spray it no but John says no, no so no. just but part <laughs> paint of me, another one and do it paint, paint another one because he likes this one just the way it is all right so now let's take some titanium white now right because we haven't used that at all now we've always so what do you use on the bark? Well, we did, but look how much white it is. Now we're going to go pure titanium white, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to say this this snow isn't... So remember, we toned down the snow here, remember? Oh, so now we're going to bring... Now we're going to bring... We're going to bring this tree forward. Because how are we going to do that? Because we're going to use just titanium white on the very top, and that's going to be... See, if we do... Uh, if we do that, and there was a drop of water there because the brush was wet, which is not a good thing. Now, I want to do that same thing here. I want to suggest that there's more light snow here, and maybe this way on this one. So we're just going to kind of direct the eye in the front. The brighter the colors, there you go. So you see how we brought these trees a little bit more pronounced than, say, the ones over here on the right or the left, yeah? As we said that that was the snow. But now you're leading the viewer to the path. Yeah, exactly. I'm doing exactly that. I'm going to say there's the... So you're manipulating the viewer. And I don't need it light all the way up. Now, that's the key. I don't need it white all the way up at the top. I can turn, tone that back a bit. Um, I just I need it lighter, but um, I want the whitest ones to be kind of in this area here, kind of toward the path. Right where path is. We're just kind of tricking the eye into going to, to look there. And um, then we said that back here was a, that's zinc white right there. That's We just did a straight line here to indicate the path was going back up and around. And um, he had something here, and I'm trying to think what he had here. Was he, oh, he kind of went down over this like this. Just kind of covered this up. So you have the brown, but it's kind of gone. At the time you see it. it's interesting it was an interesting um interesting interesting to me very interesting gr group of colors because i don't think i've ever seen snow done like this right where it's just just really haven't seen it but it's not to say it isn't and maybe the light was golden on it or something so uh do you see what i'm doing now i'm taking a little bit of burnt umber yellow oxide and white and now just sort of softening up some of this in the front, making it seem all snowy. This is kind of the final stuff you do, and everybody's kind of bored. I'm out of the video now. I'm so bored. This is the end of it. It's hard if you were, but I, I don't know. I think this is kind of different and really kind of neat and well worth doing. And then the last thing we're going to do when I say all those things, um, maybe you could, we could talk a bit about what we're kind of the things we're doing on John, on the Academy, why I put the last of the dark green up here again, because I feel like I lost some of that, okay? Maybe, what are we doing in the Academy, John, that people should know about? Well, probably the biggest thing that's going on right now is we're going off on a new year, and we're hoping to have a new website up and running and new ideas. We've got uh, several things on the drawing board, and our time at home will be a little bit longer so we're going to get a lot more things done for next year and the year after. So we've got big things coming up for the Academy. And again, you get personal art coaching with that at a ridiculously low, low price. Um, regular human being type people, non-seniors, that get it $35 a month 
you can have Ginger look at your art one original a month or four of the academy lessons. So that's five personal art coaching sessions, paintings per month that she's giving to you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, the one thing I tell people, people got a little confused about what I said was an original. An original in this case would be one non-tutorial. In other words, it's not a tutorial. It's not one of my tutorials. It's not a YouTube tutorial from anybody else. But if it's maybe you just saw an artist somewhere and you want to, you want to keep it for yourself and you want to learn how to paint it, um, I'm all happy for you to learn that and, um, um, and, and would be happy to, to show you how to do that. And while I wouldn't um, uh, you know, make a video on it, I can help you if you see something. So it's not just our tutorials you can get help with. And I think that's kind of a nice thing, right? Okay, so I'm going to say there's our path. See, I added a little bit more of the dark green to it. I just felt like we were, we were missing uh, some dark green. And um, uh, this, and I think we have this in the back was so yellow. Um, I'm going to take some glazing medium over these things back here. Glazing whoa, 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 whoa! What are you going to do? These, see these things, these little bits of snow on these back trees. It was. I'm going to just glaze over there for a minute. I'm just going to turn those just not quite so white. There you go. Back. That they needed to be pushed in the background so you could see this. And the same thing with these. These were not as uh, bright. So I'm just taking a little bit of, um, I think probably the color I would want would be like um, azo gold on this. Like I'm looking at his and going, those are not white. A little bit of azo gold by Golden, the glazing. I want to show what happens. We're just going to um, just tone these ones back. Remember, we want this to have that sort of. Uh, here, these are, we're just toning these back a little bit on these back ones like this so that those others go forward. Yeah, you're making close. sure that the eye is going to stay over in that quadrant you want yeah. them in. Yeah, didn't want to take the white off of off of us there. And and yet, you know, and you, you those are some things as artists you, you learn to do um, when you're painting is to just... Um, you can you have you can usually most things are two toned, or it's a flower or something. It's two toned. So if that's the under part of that gold, then I might say it's a little lighter here, but not much. And it's still it's got still still should have some yellow oxide in it, the light. So I'm going to say that that's my my tree here, but it's going to have some yellow oxide on it like that. And that's the edge of that tree. So that little tree is off to its side. And then he had all these little happy little trees. Remember that Bob Ross always had his trees happy were always trees. happy, and um, and I think that's kind of what we're going for here is the uh, a happy, happy little tree, happy little tree, and uh, here's the snow coming over. There's no blue in this painting. It's all in the golds and the browns, right? And uh, which is fun, right? It's all in the golds and the browns, and. Uh, See, I want that darker. There. So, okay, I think that's it. I think there's our kind of example of what we were painting. And I think we sort of, uh, we have Winter Wonderland. Which Winter is, Wonderland of 1894. Yeah, of 1895. 1895. Winter Wonderland of 1895. And I feel like, uh, you know, that we certainly got that. And I see it's some more thing. You're going, oh, no, she sees something else. Well, he had some more of these branches in the front, these green ones down in here like this. He had something like that with the snow on them, too, right? Just saying. Just there was some snow. I just I, Every time I look at a picture, I'll see something else that I, I might want to add. And he's got some of these coming up like this on this, this tree right there. Okay. There you go. So it kind of broke up that tree. There you go, you guys. It's, that's something kind of, that's way different than, say, um, um, you, you know, the, um, say, a painting like this. This was a YouTube well, lesson that we did showing you how to do uh, snow on uh, pine trees. So it's way different than that when you think about uh, the golden glow of the winter wonderland. Uh, you it's might, very similar to skiing home, though. It's see, yeah, we're, we're yeah, we just I didn't show that because they were behind me and I didn't get to show you some of our great ones on on uh, 
that we have in the academy, but it's similar to that, isn't it? Our new Ouija artist. Do you want? Should we show that? It's our final thing, John. I want you to see that because there are this idea of using gold as a background for a winner is sort of interesting, and it does it does have that nice sort of elegant look. And when you turn this, can you see the gold kind of flicking through? Flicking through. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to show one last thing when I'm done with this. One last thing we'll do before we finish that, but if you'll, John, will back up. Backing up, boss. All right. This is a painting that we have in our art academy. It's called Skiing Home. It was originally done by a Norwegian artist at about the same time period. And um, you've got the skier and the, uh, the little chalet in the mountains and this wonderful yellow sky with the purple. Now, this is interesting because gold, yellow and purple are complements on the color wheel. But now there's no purple in this one right there's there's no purple in this at all even though it's very it's got a lot of gold in it but i i started to show you because of that gold background you see how it sort of almost it has shimmers a, it shimmers and you almost could do now this is what uh -oh, you could here do she goes. I, th um, I thought we were done well we are but they wanted to see this oh i i, they, I missed that call you did so look i'm going to take a little bit of the gold paint and i want you to see something um It, it, there is some gold here. Well, there is now. See, now look, it, um, you could just do little tiny drops of this shimmery col color, almost better than foil, right? I want you to just see what that does. Uh, just, just, for, just for kicks, look at that. So I just added a little bit of that in there, and it just now I didn't do it everywhere, right? But just no, no, you keep going. Just on this branch right here, a couple of them, just a few dots. Don't get carried away. But now, um, if you see now, it's really doesn't it sh doesn't it shimmer a little bit more even? Look at that. See that just can you see it? See oh, how yeah. it, see how it taps this. It has almost this metallic uh, look to it, right? So it doesn't take much, and I'll put the brush away now and sign it. I just think that's way cool, you guys. Don't you think so? Something it's, different for you. So wanted to give you something different for the holidays. Try this. Um, you know, you wouldn't have to do these kinds of pine trees either. You could just do the normal kind if you're more comfortable with that. But the idea of, of doing a winter a landscape and a, and using the the gold as a background, All in warm maybe tones. just toning it down. We used a little raw umber. We put a comment. It. Put a comment I, below. Tell us what you think of this. Yeah, tell me if you if you like the idea of this. I think I want to darken that tree up like that. Okay, if you like the idea of this, I'm very curious to see what you think about it. Because I, f I found it fun to do. And um, uh, you know what I would sign this with, too, is I had this out earlier. This is my, uh, this is a Posca pen, and it's a, it's a in gold. kind of a gold Posca pen. And I think I might sign that right there. I what would. I think with the gold pen. And then it makes me wonder, let's say, you've got to really shake these things up. So I, I hope this shook you up. It's an idea of something <laughs> different to do. Another segue. Another segue. Is that something different to do, you know? Oh, you're let's branching Let's get painting. Out. Let's have fun. Let's, uh, somebody said, you know, let's, did you know that they, I'm trying to sign this. Did you know that um, there's only two things that scientists have definitely proven, I am told, to reverse aging in the brain? And one is... Um, Composing music. Composing music. And the other is painting. You don't even have to be good at it. Just get out there and paint, right? And I love that Posca pen. I mean, you, you know I want to do some Put it gold away. Put it up. <laughs> paintbrush. You know I want to make some branches with it down. No. We're done. We're done. We're done, you guys. Hope you had fun watching us. See Leave us a comment week. below. Tell us what you think. Let's Tell get a little dialogue going here. We appreciate here. all the... the, um, uh, the the, the nice likes that you've given us, and I, I know you subscribed if, if you had I'm sure you subscribed. You might want to check it again. Press that subscribe button just to make sure. Hit that little bell so you know when we put something new up, you'll be notified. Night, everybody. Thanks. Night. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.
Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that, you know, we we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial in wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I.